Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the fights that took place last night. Jesse Vargas versus Wale Amatoso. Let me just say, going into the fight, here on YouTube, I picked Amatoso. The plus 190 underdog. Quite frankly, I thought he was a better fighter than Jesse Vargas. Now, let me tell you, I still do. I think the judges made a mistake. Let's just put it this way. Dan Rayfield of ESPN, a uh, very respected boxing reporter. He had Amatoso winning the fight, right? 95-94. The fans who texted in after the fight to HBO, had Amatoso winning the fight. Harold Letterman had Amatoso up by a round going into the last round. Let me just say, in my opinion, it's clear in that last round that Amatoso wins the last round. Let me hear from YouTube Nation on that, right? Now, granted, because I picked Amatoso, Perhaps I'm biased. Maybe I saw the fight through the eyes of a better who bet on Amatoso. But I thought Amatoso won the first round. Understand, Amatoso scores the only knockdown in the fight in the second round. Amatoso comes out and wins the third round. By my count, he's up four rounds to none at the end of the third round. Now, I don't know what happened from rounds four to ten that would lead anyone to believe that Jesse Vargas won the fight by five rounds, which is what Judge Guenadier had, or by three rounds, which is what Judges Jonathan Davis and Fritz Werner had, right? I just don't get the scoring, right? Let me point out, too, that many of these rounds were close rounds, certainly not the round where Jesse Vargas gets knocked down, right? But many of the rounds were close rounds, I did not get the feeling that Jesse Vargas was dominating the fight. Quite the opposite. I actually thought that Amatoso won this fight by at least two rounds on my scorecard. I thought that Jesse Vargas had a very effective jab. He did. He was able to neutralize Amatoso's right hand. He did. But, think about it. If Jesse Vargas's jab up top was his most effective punch. Why was it that Amatoso was able to exit this fight relatively unmarked, whereas Jesse Vargas was the one who was bleeding around his eye, right? Also, when you hear that Jesse Vargas landed more punches, you need to ask yourself the question about the quality of the punches. Were they jabs or were they hooks? I thought Amatoso, quite frankly, landed the more meaningful punches in this 10-rounder. He's the fighter who scored the knockdown. He's the fighter who started fast, right? He's the fighter who, quite frankly, in my opinion, closed strong. I'm surprised that this fight was anything other than an Amatoso victory if you know, you're generous to Vargas, then quite frankly, at best, the fight should have been a split decision. One man's opinion, let me just say too, this is the risk in gambling, right? I took a plus 190 underdog and lost to the favorite fighter, a Vegas fighter, um, you know, fighting in Southern California. All I could say is, so it goes, uh, we'll try to live for another day. I'm going to continue to be aggressive, in looking at underdogs, just understand that neither Harold Letterman on HBO, nor ESPN's Dan Rayfield, nor the fans who voted in the text contest, none of them had Jesse Vargas winning this fight. In my opinion, gamblers like me who bet on Amatoso, and it was a spirited fight, got ripped off 
when this decision was read. Let me say, too, I encourage everyone to look at the fighters when the decision is read, right? I understand fighters have a habit of uh, claiming victory even when they've been beaten. But I want you to look at Amatoso's corner. I know Vargas's corner was looking confident. But I want you to look at Amatoso's corner. It's clear they are shocked when the decision comes down that they've lost a fight. Also, if anyone out there has a scorecard that had Vargas winning this fight, a fight in which he's knocked down, right? Winning this fight by five rounds. I'd like to hear from you. Let me just say, going forward, too, I believe Amatoso has the brighter future. Jesse Vargas is maxing out with a skill set that really is built around a jab, not a lot of mobility, right? In fact, Amatoso was the aggressor for most of the fight. So just looking at the two guys, knowing that Amatoso is the bigger puncher, is the less scripted fighter, is the harder fighter to prepare to fight against. I would make the argument that even though Jesse Vargas won this fight, you need to keep Amatoso on your radar because quite frankly, he's gonna be undervalued because of this loss. Let's talk about Timothy Bradley against Ruslan Provotnikov. Now, make no mistake, Timothy Bradley got rocked in this fight. There's no other way to look at it, right? I was expecting Timothy Bradley to do better than he did. He did win the fight, but I was expecting him to do much better than he did. So his performance is a bit of a disappointment. He even gets dropped in the 12th round. And let me just make one point here. Bradley's lucky he went down when he did. Because had he played tough guy there at the end of the fight, and had he tried to stay on his feet, he might have been put down and counted out. Right? By going down, it actually enabled Bradley to spend eight seconds. Right? You know, he avoided punishment for eight seconds, which could have been a crucial eight seconds in the fight. When he gets up and the ref lets the fight continue, Povotnikov does not have enough time to race across the ring and hit Bradley. Make no mistake, at the end of this fight, Timothy Bradley's fuel tank was on E. Now, all of that said, and given the disastrous start to the fight that Bradley had, getting rocked. That's the word that comes to mind. He's getting hit, he's getting hit flush, and he's hurt. Just understand that on my scorecard, Bradley won most of the second half of the fight. In other words, once Bradley clears his head, and once Bradley starts to move, Provodnikov could not keep up with Timothy Bradley's foot speed or volume, right? In my opinion, Timothy Bradley wins really all of the second half of the fight with the exception of the 12th round, right? Now, that's not to say that Ruslan Provodnikov didn't win some rounds by wide margins. We can argue about this, but I will say this. For a fighter to lose a round 10-8, where he has not been knocked down, takes more than I saw yesterday. In other words, Timothy Bradley, he's definitely losing rounds. He's definitely getting hit, particularly early in the fight. No question about it. You heard Max Kellerman say, Bradley's out on his feet. The kicker, though, is Bradley's throwing punches back. Right? Bradley's actually engaged. Right? Bradley's not completely blown out. Right? Bradley, who, after the fight, admits that he likely had a concussion and that he was dizzy, and no doubt, Bradley's physical condition prevented him from moving around the ring as much as he would have liked in the 12th round. 
No question about that, right? But understand that Timothy Bradley, quite frankly, isn't, to me, in 10-8 territory short of the 12th round. 12th round is definitely a 10-8 round, but, you know, and keep in mind, Timothy Bradley only goes down once in the 12th round. But in the earlier rounds, when Timothy Bradley is getting battered, and it's clear that Ruslan Provodnikov is getting the better of it, certainly at the beginning of the fight, right? Certainly in the middle of the fight where they're exchanging and Timothy Bradley looks out on his feet, and they're exchanging punches, and it's clear Provodnikov is getting the better of it. Just understand that Bradley wisely is exchanging punches, right? For there to be a 10-8 round where neither fighter hits the canvas, it would have to be a situation where one fighter is practically defenseless, in my opinion, right? To those of you who are boxing judges or, have, you know, or who have studied boxing uh, adjudication, feel free to leave your comments here. I just don't buy the post-fight press comments that Provodnikov should have won three 10-8 rounds. I didn't see it, right? I didn't see it that way. What I saw was a challenger who was ready, who took it to the champ, who, you know, banked the first two rounds, looked great doing so, and then I saw a champ suck it up after, you know, a very rough patch in the fight, set the course in the middle of the fight, and glide you know, granted, it's it's rough sledding, but I thought Bradley had the upper hand, you know, in the latter half of the fight until we get to the 12th round when the wheels come off the track. I thought Bradley won the fight. Provodnikov clearly is a major puncher. The problem with Provodnikov is he doesn't marry that punch with great mobility. So that gave Bradley an opportunity to literally outwork him while moving. And I thought that's exactly what Bradley did. I know the fight's controversial. I hope you leave your comments for all of us here in the comment section. Let's talk about it. I thought Timothy Bradley won this fight. My advice to Timothy Bradley is to take a fight against a guy who doesn't hit as hard as Provodnikov in your next fight, right? Fighters need to pace themselves. This was a grueling fight, even though Bradley was a 7-1 to one favorite. Right? Grueling fight. If I'm Bradley, quite frankly, now's the perfect time to take some time off. I've seen Bradley down in fights. The Kendall Holt fight. Bradley's down. I've never seen Timothy Bradley as beaten up as he was in this fight. Ruslan Provodnikov might be unknown, but he beat up Timothy Bradley. If I'm Joel Diaz or the other members of Bradley's team, I would say, okay, our guy has just been beaten up. Not beaten, but beaten up. We need to pace things. Let's take an easier fight so he can, you know, um, rejuvenate and be ready for the bigger challenges down the road. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. To sum up, I didn't like the decision in the Amatoso-Vargas fight. I thought Amatoso won that fight. Granted, it was a competitive match. I did feel, because of the second half of the Bradley-Provodnikov fight, that Timothy Bradley did beat Provodnikov, even scoring the 12th round the 10-8 round that it was. I don't believe there were other 10-8 rounds in that fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for us here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.